YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. All right, folks, you know the deal. It is Thursday, and we're going to go over the latest Destiny 2 news. We got a pretty kick-ass new trailer, which I'm going to roll a few times in the background. I'd love to play it for you with sound, but I will just link it in the description. It has a really cool cover of the Rolling Stones song, Paint It Black, and sure enough, I will get a copyright strike, so I don't want to do that. But I'm going to roll it around in the background a few times so you can see it. Anyway, we're going to cover the latest Destiny 2 news, including the This we get Bungie. If you are not subscribed, subscribe. I want to earn your subscription. Drop a like on the video if you see fit, of course. And little known fact that 40, well, roughly 46% of you guys who watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you guys could kindly hit that subscription button, that would be great. All right, guys, let's get into the video. First off, Luke Smith was on a, well, sort of show slash podcast. I think it was like called Twitch Talks or something. I caught part of it, but not the entire thing. But um, two main things came out of it that were really important and uh, a non pig over on Twitter I will link him in the description uh, summarized one of the things uh, Luke Smith just said that they look at stasis as the first of the darkness subclasses meaning that down the road as we wield the darkness we will be more than likely getting more of these darkness subclasses now who knows what that means for the older subclasses arc void of solar but remember they did say in a previous interview that if we like how the whole system works out with the fragments and things like that of customizing our new stasis subclasses, they might bring it over to Solar, Arc, and Void. Then some great news regarding cleaning up your vault per Luke Smith. And Dylan tweeted out just kind of a quick summary. You don't need to have armor pieces in your vault when Transmog goes live for them to be eligible collections based so you can free up some vault space so yeah if you have armor you like well you can transmog it when they actually roll it out and he says no transmog plan for a future season once we have a firm date we'll be sure as hell to let you know stay tuned so it's not going to come right away but now we could start cleaning up our vaults um i cleaned up mine a yeah, a long time ago, got all my great stat rolls from the uh, recaster, and I'm fine for right now. Let me know in the comment section, have you cleaned out your vault yet, or are you going to start doing it now? Okay, the This Week at Bungie for the 29th just hit, and we've got some jam-packed information to go over. First, let's go over the roadmap, because I didn't make a formal video on it, I just kind of went over it on stream. So, on the 10th, the Seasonal Artifact and the Reward Track unlocks, and also the Empire Hunt begins. Remember, this is called Season of the Hunt. The Glassway Strike opens. That's going to be the new strike over on Europa, it looks like. Then, from the, um, the 10th through the uh, 12th of January, uncover Europa's secrets. Uh, Adept weapons added to trials will be on the 13th. And then, on the 17th, the Season Mission begins. And we have the uh, Wrathborn Hunt begins. On the 21st, we've got the Raid, the Deep Stone Crypt. And let me know if you're going for Worlds First or will be playing it that day. I probably will not because I usually tap out on the first weekend, let everyone else do it, uh, let Datto put out his guide, and then regroup the following week when I'm powered up, and then I'll do the Raid then. Iron Banner will be on the 8th of December. We have the Dawning Live event uh, on the 15th through the 1st of, no, I'm sorry, the 5th of January and more. Let's talk about the progression changes. And in a nutshell, the soft cap is going to be 1200. The hard cap is going to be 1250 and the pinnacle cap will be 1260. Now, remember, your seasonal artifact will add on to those as you level up with XP, which we will talk about in a little bit. So after you reach the hard cap of 1250 there's an additional 10 power you can earn through earning pinnacle rewards if you choose to hit that pinnacle cap when you first log into the season all of your weapons and armor will be at uh, 10,050 power or higher if you have anything over 1050 it will be unchanged and anything under will be brought up to 1050 all new players will start off at 1050 so let's talk about some powerful reward changes so I'm just gonna read this verbatim we've heard a lot of feedback from players for more opportunities to earn powerful rewards from activities you enjoy the most. 
We have a change coming that will allow you to have a chance to earn powerful rewards from Strikes, Gambit, Crucible, and from Seasonal Drops all the way up to the Hard Cap, not the Pinnacle Cap. It will still be much quicker to continue to complete all of the powerful reward sources each week, but if you just want to play Strikes or Crucible matches all day, every day, you could continue to earn powerful rewards. So I like that because if you're really not into the Crucible and like more of a PvE player like myself, okay, it gives me that option. They say, we hope this helps you to continue increasing your power during the period when you are still close to the soft cap and may find completing some of the powerful sources like the ordeal very difficult. What about the tokens and collections? I hate the token system. Do you guys like it? Let me know in the comment section. So starting next season, gear received from collections and turning in tokens will have a lower power than in previous seasons. Gear earned through token purchases will be 20 power below your power level and collections buybacks will be capped at 1050 power. And in terms of economy, well, they say some currencies and items have changed coming either at the end of this season or in the near future. But here's what we can expect for this season. So with materials, they say the simple answer is that, well, there's no changes to these currencies in Season of the Hunt, and you'll be able to continue to spend them at vendors normally. But they say starting in Season 13, Phase Glass Needles, Alcane Dust, Simulation Seeds, and Seraphite will no longer be accepted by vendors. For those of you who still have uh, unspent stockpiles at the end of the season of the hunt, Spider will be kind enough to offer a small glimmer exchange to take them off your hands. But you'll realize the best value will be by spending them uh, before that point to make sure you turn your stockpiles in by the end of next season. They also say there will be some other items removed from your inventory at the end of season of arrivals, some like faction tokens have not had a purpose in quite a while, and others, like expired ramen coupons, never really had a purpose but held some sentimental value. We know that you might be hard pressed to part with those, but it's time to let them go. Just bring back faction rallies or make the factions back to the way they were in Destiny 1 already, Bungie. Please, for the sake, for all of us, please just do it. What about Bounty Fatigue? Well, Bounty Fatigue is us tired of playing Bounty Simulator 2020 or for the last few years. But they say that one of the plans we previewed was to eventually replace weekly bounties with a new mechanism to provide players with a set of non-expiring and account-scoped objectives each week that will grant lots of season rank progress. Now they do say we are still working on that system and we will share more on it before it gets a targeted release of season 13. So not season 12 guys. Let's talk about the season pass and also Bright Dust. And they say that we wanted to change the way that you earn Bright Dust and move more towards account specific ways to give players only one character significantly more Bright Dust than they've been earning over the last year. So here's a high level look at the changes. Basically season pass free path owners will now have uh, 7,500 Bright Dust. Season Pass Owned Path will now offer 3,000 Bright Dust. Weekly Bounties will now award 100 Bright Dust. They also mention with these changes, the vast majority of players will be earning more Bright Dust than ever before. One of our goals here is not to have a system that pushes you to try to grind out every weekly bounty on all three characters every single week. Whether you are a three character player or only play as a hunter, you know Dylan how to write that one up, Bright Dust will be more available when earning ranks on the season pass. We will also be making a change to the timing of season pass rank purchases, which will be available starting in week five instead of week nine. Now the spider is gonna be getting some pretty big changes, so let's just dive into this. So first off, spider will no longer, no longer be selling legendary shards. This exchange was removed mainly because it was not seeing enough use, particularly when compared with other exchange offers. After reviewing player balances and the frequency with which this exchange was accessed, it was easy to decide, well, let's just free up the space for something else and more interesting. So the spider is going to be selling enhancement prisms for, guess what, 400 legendary shards. I don't have that many legendary, I have like maybe 3,000. Let me know in the comment section. I always love asking you guys questions in the comment section. Um, how many uh, legendary shards do you guys have? I think I have about like 3,000. Uh, and they say, and he's stingy with them, so you can only purchase three a week. 
but we wanted to give those of you with a higher balance of the way that you transmute your legendary shards into something a little more valuable than planetary materials and upgrade modules. Second, we've taken a look at how enhancement core exchange works and made some changes. The ascending cost mechanism has been removed. In its place, Spider will now sell you five enhancement cores a day for a fixed price of 30 legendary shards each. Okay, that's not bad. I could deal with that. While this does limit the number of cores you can acquire from him each day, we feel it's con a consistent price is a clear experience with less chance to accidentally spend large quantities of legendary shards. Uh, more importantly, it's also cheaper. In the old purchase model, you'd pay 310 legendary shards for just five enhancement cores. So in the new model, you'll only pay 30 shards each, which equals out to 150 legendary shards for five enhancement cores. So while it does limit your acquisition rate, it actually will save you 160 legendary shards every five cores. Now remember, they are changing up the way we have our ghost shells and they will take mods on them, but they also mention some things, well, just a quick mention about regarding Speed Demon, XP, Guiding Light, things like that. They say, finally, we've seen a few people wondering if you'll be able to equip the Ghost with a, a mod for Speed Demon with other mods like Guiding Light in the new system. And we have some good news for you. You won't need to. Starting in Beyond Light, all Sparrows, both Legendary and Exotic, will innately summon instantly, even without a Transmat Preloader perk. As a result, there is no need for a Ghost mod to impact this functionality. So Speed Demon was not carried forward into the new system. But they do mention if you already have a Sparrow with the Transmat Preloader, you can keep using it and it will work just fine. Or you could pull it off from collections and get two new perks. Newly created Sparrows will no longer roll with the Transmat Preloader, so you have a chance to get yourself an extra perk and still retain that instant summon speed. Hop on that newly instant summoning Sparrow and zip on over to check out Spider's new offers. He's ready and waiting to wrap up for those greedy arms around some of your wealth and make you a deal that you can't refuse. Good old Eververse. So starting in Season of the Hunt, Bright Engrams will now contain all Eververse content from Season 1 to three seasons prior to the current season, excluding content from special events like Festival of the Lost, The Dawning, etc. But some practical examples here. Season 12, Bright Engrams will contain all content from Seasons 1 through 9. Season 13, Bright Engrams will contain all content from Seasons 1 through 10. Actually, it was Cosmo that wrote this uh, this week at Bungie. I know Dylan's a hunter. I didn't know Cosmo was one too. But at the end, uh, next week, we're going to have some patch notes for the big update on November 10th. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I will be streaming a ton when Beyond Light comes out. I will be streaming, uh, well, the final reset before Beyond Light. So I'll see you guys on Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow for Xur. And uh, yeah, just expect daily videos every single day because, uh, yeah, we've been in such a dry spell and uh, I'm ready to get back to the grind. So that's it, guys. Do me a favor. Let me hashtag made it to the end. If you did make it to the end and do me a favor well i said that twice drop a like on this video only if you see fit follow me on twitter at mesa sean check out my stream usually and always on youtube and that's it i am out of here like vladimir